Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Real Reds Talk. We have a special individual on today in more than one way. Almost getting into double figures, I believe, um, on the channel. More appearances than Mason Mount, one might say. Jay, um, how are we doing? How's life, mate? How are you? I'm good, right? First of all, I, I owe you boys an apology because I hate... I hate when we go late on a live, right? We go live. We go late on a live a lot on Paddock, yeah? And people would assume that it's because we're all right with that. We don't mind. And it is a bit of a bugbear of mine, right? Because it's like, we might be live at 10 and we'll go live at 10 past 10. Or we might be live on a brew at 4. We'll go live at quarter past 4. And I've done it to you boys. But I have got, um, I've got an excuse, right? Because I was sat down. I was just getting the final preparations to... Um, to you know, come on the, the channel and then my better half had actually made, made me something so she made my tea. So she um she brought my tea in at like 25 past six. I know, so chicken fucking tenders like that. I couldn't <laughs> say like, nah, you need to take that away. I'm about to yeah, do the, the real red talk because she lives near you in Eccles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She'll fucking find you. Yep. And, oh, you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't want to get involved, you know what I mean? Because yeah. she can handle herself. So I just thought I'll, I'll eat my tea. And then I'll come on the channel with the lads. Well, look, you've done more than enough for us, so it's absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. We're going to dive straight into it. No kind of beating around the bush or whatever, Jay. I'm going to kick it off, okay, with 10 quick fire questions. Love you, boys. Do you know what, you. right? There's always... Do you know what? <laughs> I loved it last time. When we went off on a tangent about tram stops. Yeah, yeah we yeah, did. Yeah. It was like, we did. Pomona, man, that's dead out. No one cares about Pomona. You've got to break it up Pomona. a bit, innit? You know what I mean? And it's just like, do you know what? It's, we turned it into the brew, and I, I love the fact that, like, at one point, some of you, I can't remember which one of you lads was trying to get it back on track. It's like, come on, it, it's, not it's, it's not happening. It's not happening. Get that. Because you was get laughing that, at me at a time, and you was going, yeah, mate, don't don't try. Yeah, let it. And I was like, all right, I'll try to segue. Anyone can chat about Manchester United now. We're yeah, talking about yeah. tram stops. Who's doing that content? Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. There's a there's a couple of questions here that I want to ask you. So it's just one one answer or the other, okay? Ten quick fire yeah. questions, basically, like um, what you call it, just to get to know Jay Motty for anyone who's watching who may not know. Of it's you. about time we did this. I might bring about this into time. paddock actually. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just ten quick, all, a little bit scattered and random, but we'll go for it. All right. Tea or coffee? Yeah. Coffee. Okay. Oh, wow, I was surprised. I always drink a lot of uh, brew. Nah, and when I say brew, I, I I see, I, when I, we have this debate in our house, right? Because for me, a brew, a coffee is a brew. Okay. But my ah, sister says, it? nah, a tea, well... a, tea is a, a tea is a brew and a coffee isn't. A coffee is a coffee. Okay. I don't know. You're, 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 are you tea drinkers, you lot? Oh, but don't even fucking speak to oh, me. We, we, have, uh, right. we have chats before the show. Me and Chivy, yeah. one of the other lads, are big tea drinkers. And every time he starts yeah. talking about it, Nick loses his mind because he's just he's not here for it. No one wants to hear so about you... fucking tea bag, mate. No <laughs> one. No one. So you 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 voted for Brexit, yeah? You wanted them lot, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, Chivy's Nigerian, you know I mean? so if he did, it's in it gets yeah. his own interests. He's gonna get yeah. kicked out. So what is he quite saying, mate? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say, I don't even know if he is Nigerian. I shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> <laughs> get us all cancelled straight away. Yeah. Um, I'm all about the coffee, mate. Okay, right. We'll, we'll try to do these quick fires. Robson or Keane? Oh, you are. You know what? You're horrible, you two. You know, you come at me like you're my friends, right? And then you do this to me. Depending on what day you ask me, you get a different answer. But today, today, I'll say Robbo. Eccles or Sale? Shut up! I'm not even yeah. answering that. <laughs> Absolutely, that's the worst question, right? That is the worst question I've ever been asked. Yeah, and I've been nicked several times. That is terrible. Right? Can we just can Honestly, we just can we just say I live in sale now, so let's not go too hard on hey, sale. Like, there we go. I live in there sale. You could no 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 hang on a minute, right? It's nothing no disrespect to sale. Yeah, if you if you live on a race course, yeah, I respect you. There's nothing oh, wrong with that. This again. We're not doing this again. Right. Yeah. All right, call it sale west, whatever. <laughs> but Eccles or anywhere, right? You could have said Eccles or Beverly Hills, yeah? Oh. The answer's always going to be Eccles, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Let's have it take right. Take the man out of Eccles. You can't take the Eccles out of the man. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. What is it? Um, Wait a minute. I've done this. Is it M28? You are now. M30. Oh. M30. No. I'm, M oh. I'm M33. Three, M33. M33. I always, yeah. I always get it mixed up. So Sorry, I'm still no. in the 30s. I'm still in the 30s. Yeah. So we're still there. Sales crazy, don't it? Because you'll have like a million pound ounce next to the state. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's mental. It's off its head. Crazy. Yeah, it's mad. Likewise, with Eccles, it's not exactly normal, is it? But we move, we move. Um, United to win the Premier League or Champions League? Ooh, that's a 
that's a good one, you know. Sam, more than welcome to throw your answer in there as well, just to throw it in the mix. Uh, the Premier League just so we're one ahead of Liverpool. Mm-hmm. I'd have to say the Champions League, just because, and I'll explain myself, I've been very fortunate. I've been, you know, there, as in terms of I've watched most of the games, I've been at the stadium or whatever, when United have lifted every single one of those 13 Premier League titles, or at least I've been to most of the games in those seasons, and I've witnessed it. I've seen us, you know, I've been alive for us to win two Champions Leagues. So to win a Champions League for me would, would hit differently. And also as well, I get your point about the Scousers, got City breathing down our next for the old Champions Leagues you know I wouldn't be surprised if they added another one this season exactly oh, don't, make was... don't make me sick don't make me sick I'm please. sorry I'm sorry I don't like to come on this, this channel and bring any negativity but I'm looking at Europe right now yeah and it's weak yeah and I'm not talking about from a Brexit perspective I mean like the, the Champions League is just you look at it there's no elite teams on the continent like there used to be I you used to look at that it. Barcelona team you used to go yep. there's 10 world class players in there if not 11 Look at the Real Madrid team. You go, there's at least seven generational talents in that team. Now you look at it, you go, there's two. You look at Barca, you go, the bang average. You look at Bayern Munich, you go, yeah, they've got Harry Kane, they've got one or two other good players, but they're not the Bayern Munich team. Italian league, Italian league's dead as well. Like it's not Italian. When I was, you know, younger, the the Italian league was like the creme de la creme. Juventus were basically in the Champions League final every year, Mm. and now it's like. I don't see anyone in the Italian league doing anything. I know Inter Milan got to the final last year, but realistically, I think if I was like, even if I was an Arsenal, yeah, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd be thinking, this is our chance to win this. You know, mm. this is no, we're never gonna get a better chance. We if we can beat Manchester City, we can win the Champions League. Now, yeah. I know it's a big if, but I think Arsenal are probably the second best team in the competition. I would, I would never say that ever. Even well, when they got to the final, I didn't think they were. <clears throat> Hold that thought, because we've got another question in. Again, this is for both of you. Would you rather Liverpool win the league or City? City. City, City next. Don't count, does it? City. Four, don't four, count. Yeah, it's four in che- a row for City Yeah, but they, they, they've cheated the way there, so it don't matter. It's not, it's not a thing. I'm immune to it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Right. saw that thing with McCola on uh, with uh, Big Steve from fucking thing. I was laughing at me. I, I thought he did well, McCola. I thought, he, he, did. Yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. He, he said the right things and he you know he, he made a great argument a great point I and i was kind of disappointed a little bit neville because he sort of sits there when he does that though. City fans or liverpool fans say things that yeah i know he doesn't agree with but he kind of i know you gotta like let a debate go but yeah at times like you gotta join in bit, can't be bit, bit, when he yeah. says he thinks something that's not right absolutely but neville tends to sort of stay quiet but no mccullough in those no situations right because we've done the overlap quite a few times Stratford Pilot, mccall has been on it, Joe's been on it, House has been on it. Mm-hmm. I'm always a little bit reluctant. I've been, I'm not. They don't always ask me. They ask McCall. There was once yeah. I think they asked if I wanted to go on it, and I didn't. But we, we still sent someone. I'm always. I, I I know in that situation that I'd struggle because yeah. you have to keep yourself sort of cool and make your points and not just rant and shout things and abuse, be abusive and kick mm. off and. Say things that'll get you in trouble, and I'd struggle, mate. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> At least you're on You it. can fuck off. And yeah, as for yeah. you, do you know what I mean? It yeah. just turned into just a, a slanging match, and, it, and then, you know, security probably asked me to leave, and I would be never back, invited back on there again. Yeah. But McCullough always argues his case, he makes he does a good job. And I'll tell you, right, on that overlap, it is brutal because if you ever go in the comments and that, it's all different fans from different clubs, so they're just hammering everyone. Of course. So it can be it can be horrible, but a lot of people agree with Macca. They thought he did a really good job, and I agree. Yeah, yeah, he smashed it. Um, Sam, would you agree with with Jade's thing there? The, yeah. the uh, Liverpool or City to win? Yeah, yeah City because it don't count, does it? They okay. the way there, so it doesn't matter. Right, we'll try blast through these ones then, and then we'll get into no a, a couple of the uh, you know stadium talk and all that kind of jazz. So Garnat chose or Rooney's overhead kick. Which one was better? It's the occasion, in it? Like. Do you know what though? Do you know, if we're being honest, the better kick, the better technical kick, technically, was Garnacho's. Yeah. yeah, was Garnacho's. And I love Garnacho, me. I do. I love the kid. But because of the occasion, because it was the derby, and it sort of ended any. At that time, there was like a little slight chance that City could get involved in the mm-hmm. title race, and that ended it. I'd have to go with Rooney's. Yeah, I agree. The occasion beats the technical yeah. brilliance of Garnacho's as good as it was. And it doesn't really mean anything. Like, you know what I mean? We're not probably not going to win anything this season. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> so, one player to take a penalty to save your life. Eric Cantona. 
That's a good bad. answer. That's a good answer. At the minute, I'd say Bruno. His record's pretty good. <laughs> Is it Bruno's got? A, he's scored more than anyone else. Yeah, he's it? it's like, like nine penalties or something. It's like ninety-eight percent accuracy, I think. Ninety-eight, you know. Ninety-eight percent. The average is like, the average is like seventy-two or something. Yeah, yeah. Seventy-two percent, I think. That's Still don't like ridiculous. that fucking skip that he does. It gives me a fucking heart murmur. I think it's it. harder for Bruno as well, to be fair, with you, because I think if you're taking penalties, there was a time when he was taking them every week almost. Mm. Yeah. Because VAR and just penalties were just that early season, winning. especially. Yeah. A lot. Teams weren't used to the VAR thing, so they were just dying. players were just pulling shirts like yeah. they always had and fouling like they always had, and all of a sudden it's getting pulled up. And yet, he still scored practically every penalty. And I think that's harder because keepers are watching you. People's, keepers are more used to you. There's, there's more sort of... Um, the frequency is, is obviously greater. But he, he always steps up. And also, I love... I'll never forget the one against Brian. The game yeah. had ended. The game had finished. We yeah. drew. It Ooh, said full what? time. Yeah. On, on, uh, on, on Sky Sports, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. It, it said full time. <laughs> free all or whatever it was. And then United got on a penalty after full time. It was Crazy. absolutely... Man, I loved it. Yeah. But they Brian Case for that because I remember Shaw. Uh, do you remember the handball? Was yeah. it Shaw? Like the Brian. last minute. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. Fucking hell. And you knew as well, didn't you, when you saw that on the yeah. replay? Mm. It's like, nah, man, that's a penalty. That in yeah. this day and age. Brian Casey's got a good penalty taker. Dennis Irwin. It's a good shout. Dennis, Dennis Irwin, Irwin was it? a very good penalty taker. Yeah, he was. He was. He was meant Dennis Irwin. He's just for me. I, we I was having this debate the other day in the office, and there was a debate about who's the best best left back, like in Premier League history. Was it Patrice Evra or Ashley Cole? And I said, you're all wrong. It was Dennis Irwin. See, I'm not old enough to appreciate Dennis Irwin, so I can't. I, when I look back, I'll say Evra or I'll say Ashley Cole. So Irwin, I've watched back clips, don't get me wrong, but I weren't, you know what I mean? I was born in 95, so don't feel like I can appreciate What do you mean you were you born in 95? Why weren't you at the game before 95? <laughs> Typical YouTube. <laughs> why, why, weren't you oh, why weren't you at the treble? Why weren't you at the treble when you were yeah. four? I wasn't born when yeah. we won the league in 93, so yeah. I didn't go. Pathetic. Yeah. I know. Sorry, guys. Um... One movie genre for the rest of your life. Oh, um, I probably go with. It's a bit. I'd go with revenge thriller. Yeah, revenge because I thriller. love a revenge film. Me, you know, like a good. Someone's been had over and they're not yeah. having it. I love all that. You know, like just, I'm gonna go and absolutely batter someone and take out their entire organization because they've. <laughs> Kicks me plants over. John Wick. That. Yeah, that kind of thing. John yeah. Wick's nonsense in it, but it's enjoyable nonsense, and I quite <laughs> yeah. like the element of now nah, you shouldn't have done that to him. Yeah. Now look at him. Um, it was, there's another one I watched. There's a few that I've seen that are good. Um, Promising Young Woman. That was a good one. She's she's on one there, um, and there was another one. Oh, I can't remember. I'll have to let me find it for you. Sorry, I know this makes awful viewing. That's <laughs> oh, right, Sam. Uh, Talk to me whilst. Thriller, horror. Anywhere in that genre, I think is is good. But I do love a good comedy as well. So, but yeah, so horror thriller. Didn't answer that question. Though. Horror, three. <laughs> ho horror thriller, like anything, like where it's it's a bit of a twist or there's a bit of something shocking, something like that. Mm. I'm, I'm down with any of that. Yeah, we uh we did that on the after dark, didn't we? There was we did. saying pick our favorite like top top films and top genres. Something but, twist, uh, something with a twist. Yeah. I'm always down. Yeah. For that. Let me find this film. I will. I will find this film that I'm on about. No, it's all right. You th think about that. And I've got a couple more questions. Brian, more questions Brian Casey said comedy, uh, Anchorman and Step Brothers on repeat. Uh... That was it. Blue Ruin, that was a good oh, one. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. That's a fucking great film. Yeah. Oh, and also, the greatest, the go, um, Dead Man's Shoes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Got you right fucking here, mate. Right fucking here. What are you love looking it. at? You, you yeah, cunt. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> right, last two. Most underrated player ever, in your opinion, or most underappreciated, or however you want to phrase it. I'm gonna. This is sound weird, right? So allow me to explain. Andy Cole for me. Now, Andy Cole is never ever in the conversation for one of the greatest strikers the Premier League's ever seen. People will talk about Sergio Aguero, they'll talk about Alan Shearer, they'll talk about Erling Haaland, they'll talk about. Um, I've heard people mention Ian Wright before they started talking about Andy Cole. And I don't understand it. Andy Cole, whatever metric you want to use, is up there, right? Last season, when Erling Haaland broke that record, people were saying Erling Haaland's broke, broke Alan Shearer's record for most goals in the Premier League season. 
he hadn't. He broke an Alan Shearer and Andy Cole's record because they both had the same amount of goals. The only difference was Andy Cole didn't take any penalties. Mm-hmm. Andy Cole's never in that conversation. I don't understand why he isn't. He won the lot, yeah? He won everything. Champions League, Premier League, FA Cup, the lot, yeah? Several times in, in most cases. He won show if he went to Blackburn. Won the, the, the League Cup, which for them is not like the, the, the regularly winning trophies, and he scored in the final. He had assists, he had goals. He was a phenomenon when he came in at Newcastle. He changed his game at Manchester United, and he has this sort of reputation oh, he needed five chances to score a goal, right? The guy scored 187 Premier League goals. Are you telling me if he took all his chances, he would have had a thousand goals? Mm. It's nonsense. Yeah. Of course, he was a goal scorer. Of course, he took his chances. And for me, Andy Cole never gets the same recognition as some of the other strikers. People talk about Harry Kane like he's far better than Andy Cole. He ain't. What's Harry Kane won? It's a lot of recency kind of bias, isn't it? People watch football this... nowadays, they forget, like... If you was putting up the numbers that Andy Cole was putting up when, when if Harry Kane had been doing that when he was a bit younger, he would have got bought by a bigger club. He would have ended up at a bigger club before he left for Bayern Munich when he was 30 years old. Yeah. Andy Cole left Newcastle because now he went after him and he managed to get the deal over the line because he was such a phenomenon. So I th- think Andy Cole just massive underrated. I mean, I think the guy had like twelve England caps or something, which is ridiculous, right? Nowadays, yeah, you can have five. Course. You have five good games, yeah. If you're an English striker, you've been in England squad. Yeah. Genuinely, if you yeah. have five good Premier League games. Your Calvin right? Lewin's probably got about fucking four or five in it at least. That's what I mean? Yeah. Like, come on, Andy yeah. Cole should have been in that team every match. Yeah, he should have a hundred England caps, not twelve. So yeah, for me, Andy Cole's underrated. He, hasn't, he didn't speak up for a long time either, did he? Like, he just let it go. And then he only started speaking out recently about how good he is. And it annoyed me because it's like, why are you not saying anything? Why are you not mm-hmm. putting yeah. your foot out and being like, I did this shit? And it's just. No, he does now. Now he yeah, is. Yeah. He's good. He's vocal. We had him like on the him. channel. He was very vocal. Yeah, it was um, But he, he, if he is, he just ignored it all because he just said, I just get on my own thing. And then when a couple of people came for him on Twitter and he pushed back on it, they shut up. Because yeah. he's got the stats to just shut anyone up. Yeah. His stats, you know, not that you need stats to prove every, any, everything, but his stats. Uh, if you're a striker, though, they're pretty fucking yeah. valid, isn't yeah. it? Like 180 yeah. odd goals. Well, he, yeah. like 187 goals, I think one of them was a penalty. Yeah. 34 goals in a season, won the treble, scored in big games, scored in the Champions League semi final, scored in many Premier League, scored the winning goal in the Premier League title decider against Spurs in 99. There's no way you can look at Andy Cole and go, he wasn't one of the greatest strikers we've ever had. Yeah, can't disagree with that. Sam, anyone you want to chuck in there? Or you just want to... I, 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 w- I, I normally would say Ji Sung Park, but I think he's finally getting recognition now for how yeah. good he was. Because for so long, ten years. he played in every single big game. Fergie selected him any time he needed a job doing. Marked yeah. players out of the game. He was phenomenally good. And mm. nobody really cares. Like nobody because now he's getting a bit of sort of renaissance because you got Hyung Min Sun who's rose to prominence and like Son has said I I love the fact that Ji Sung Park came here but now he's getting the recognition but for a lot for many years like nobody sort of mentioned Ji Sung Park so for me yeah I'd put him there yeah top player last one one historic football match to attend any any one of them it could be a World Cup final could be a Champions League final obviously I know most people will probably say the final in '99. Um, but yeah, what one historic event that you'd love to go to or wish you was there? It's got to be for me the 991 Cup Winners Cup final. There it is. Right. He's, he's got it in. Started, he sneaked it yeah. in. Anyone that says the 99 finals, United fan is off the fucking head. Because that was one of the worst games of football you've ever seen. It was. Yeah. It was United terrible. Was terrible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to go and watch that, watch it from the 90th minute onwards because the first 89 and a half minutes are absolutely Struggle. dire from a United yeah. point of view. But 91. Apparently, everyone who went there says Rotterdam was just pumping. United's first European trophy since '68. The, the second goal for Mark Hughes, one of the greatest goals you'll ever see. Against the Barcelona team that was you know, named a dream team, doesn't get much better. And that was the, the catalyst, wasn't it? Yeah. I, mm-hmm. And you know how I know it was a catalyst? Because a certain gentleman called Sir Alex Ferguson told me that. Hey, I yeah, know he dropped another one it's in there. To name drop little, again. Slide That's in there. Twice. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Funny actually, I was going to ask you. One of the questions is going to be if you could interview anyone, um, you know, he, anyone he's dream like all. the person. He's done them all. That's why. That's why. You know what? I haven't it. like. That's a good. I appreciate you saying that, but there's, there's something I haven't like. I never interviewed Eric, um, mm. McCuller and Steed. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wasn't really as involved with the channel at the time. I've been on, but I wasn't heavily involved in it. Um, 
and then there's, there's there's a few others that I'd like to interview that I'd like to sort of quiz and put certain things to. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I've I mean I've done a few. I've been quite fortunate, even going back to my, my journalism days, you know, as a reporter. But yeah, um, I don't know. I think I, I think I'd love to actually sit down with Eric Cantona. Yeah. Sam, before you kick us off with like the stadium talk, anything else yeah. you want to add on to that? The last no, um, I'd love to go to the uh, this, the other Champions League final just to watch John Terry cry. That'd be good. That would have been mine one. That'd be yeah, fun. Or a World, World Cup final, I've always wanted to go just to. Just to fucking... That France and Argentina game was unbelievable. Ooh, unbelievable. That's a shot, yeah, isn't it? Do you know in that game, like, I was rooting for Argentina just because of Lissandro Martinez. Yeah. I, I love Rafael Varane, but I thought he's already got one. He's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because I'm not a France or Argentina fan, I wasn't that invested. So when Mbappe started doing what he was doing, I actually switched and I wanted France to win because <laughs> yeah, I yeah. thought, you're watching one of the all-time great performances by any sports person ever here. Like Messi had obviously had a good tournament and it was a bit more of like a recognition of his career, mm. the, for the icing on the cake. But that game, what Mbappe was doing in that game on the that 20 stage, minute period. You, I thought we're watching something that's just unbelievable, almost immortal here. Yeah, and I wanted them to win it just for that, just yeah. for him, because I felt like I've never seen that in a World Cup final before. I know Jeff Erson obviously scored an actually, but you're watching a player like just basically taking a game and just half chances, half and just burying him, mm. um, and then obviously the penalty as well. Like it was just ridiculous. So I, I kind of wanted him to win it because I thought this is something stupid this that yeah, we see he deserved it for that that little cameo like the 20 minute 30 yeah. minute cameo yeah anything like they, won it, they could have won it couldn't they at the end of France yeah, yeah was, like, it, was it Saram who was through on goal uh, yeah. it was Saram or Kolo Moani I think it was, it was yeah I, I'm them. sorry I, I can't remember I was I, I, yeah. I can't remember. yeah it was one of them two lads um, and they nearly you know they nearly won it and um, it was um, Emilio Martinez just did that save didn't he uh, and that was it yeah the rest is history yes yeah. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk stadium, shall we? Let's try and talk about some like regular news that's going on. Um, a lot of talk about stadium, brand new, renovating, all that sort of stuff. How do you, as a fan, sort of weigh the significance of preserving the sort of heritage of Old Trafford, but then weighing it against the sort of benefits of building a modern state-of-the-art facility? Like me and Nick have spoke so many times on this channel about every time we go to Old Trafford, it's like toilets explode, it's leaking piss. You're getting food poisoning from the chicken because it's got a one-star rating. You can't fit your knees in as a six-foot-tall guy. Like, you can't sit in there properly. But you go because it's Man United. So how do you weigh it up in your head? Like, are you, are you like, you want the tradition, the history that's been built there? Or are you, like, fully in now? Now let's get a brand-new state-of-the-art and build this club to where it should be. Um, I've been pretty sort of uh, open and I've been pretty set ever since this debate came up a few years ago I remember doing something for the BBC about it and I took a bit of stick because I wanted a new stadium and at the time a lot of people disagreed and I get it I was sort of at pains to say look I understand the, the history of Manchester United and, and Old Trafford I understand the emotional attachment everyone's got to Old Trafford I understand the idea that this is the same stadium that the Busby Bays played in that the United Trinity played in that the great teams under Sir Alex Ferguson played in so we want to preserve that but and my counter argument was your history will come with you wherever you play if you're Manchester United I mean I've been at the Allianz Serena Bayern Munich haven't lost their history you don't go there and think well this isn't Bayern Munich anymore this is something else you think it's Bayern Munich we've all been to new stadiums you know around the world or in, in England wherever and your, your history will come with you and I think that would be the same if Manchester United went to a new stadium also Old Trafford is about 100 years old Yeah, you can't keep revamping it Structurally, it's limited. You, you, you're talking about you can't sit down. You're a six foot geezer. I'm five eleven. I struggle to sit down at half time because I stand for the game. But at half time, I think I'll just have a you yeah, know, yeah. ten minutes on me on my backside, and I'm squashed. And I'm five eleven. There's leaks in the roof. There's bits of concrete falling on people's heads. It's not fit for purpose to be the stadium of the biggest club in the world. It just ain't. Now you can add to it you can revamp it you can paint it you can fix these holes you can move seats around but ultimately you're just putting a sticking plaster over a gunshot wound sooner or later you are going to have to physically move stadium now it might not be for another 20 30 years but it is gonna happen right now you've got an opportunity to do that you've got an owner or a part owner 
who's willing to part fund it and also speak to the certain people he needs to speak to to get it done. You've also got the opportunity where you could keep it on the same site. You basically, when you're saying to your mates or yourself, I'm going to go to Old Trafford, you still go to Old Trafford. Same, the new stadium. Same tram stop, yeah. same thing. That's yeah, on the same tram. Me. That's me, me, you, me. Me, me and you lot, uh, we're, all, we're all getting on the tram at Eccles, we're all getting off at Exchange Key, uh -huh. we're all walking over. It's not, you know, it's not any different. It's just the stadium's 100 yeah. yards further back than it used to be. And what you might end up doing is you might say, no, we're not doing that. Revamp it, wait 20, 30 years, then you've got no choice, and then you don't have a Sir Jim Ratcliffe with all that money who can help you out. You don't have it, so you have to go cap it down to Tesco and say, can you build us a Tesco arena? <laughs> or whatever. So, for me, I get the history thing, but it comes with you. And also, parts of Old Trafford can literally be taken with you. You can take the Munich tunnel and put it in the new stadium. Yep. You can put the Munich clock in the new stadium. You can put the Busby, and you will, by the way, put the Busby statue, the yep. Fergie statue, the Trinity statue, the Jimmy mm -hmm. Murphy statue, all in the new stadium. Of course you will. You're not going to get rid of it. Imagine that. Well, we built a new stadium, but we got rid of the Samat Busby statue. No one would see that. It would never finish. wash. There'd be, be a riot. And, yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, was, me, uh, you like to be leading it, and rightly so. Yeah. So you bring the parts of Old Trafford that are sacred to the new stadium. You revamp, you rebuild it, sorry. And also, and I've heard a few people say this, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not just saying this because he's my pal, but the first person I ever heard suggest this was Stephen House when he said mm -hmm. If you build a new stadium next to Old Trafford, keep the old Old Trafford, maybe knock it down like in terms of how many seats and how many capacity, and make that an academy stadium. Yeah. And call it like the Jimmy Murphy Stadium or the Duncan Edwards Stadium or mm. whatever. And have that for your academy team. And that makes a lot of sense because another problem you've got as well is this revamp and add it into the stadium. Old Trafford is literally in a place where it becomes impossible to add too much to it because you've got a canal and a railway line there. Yeah. And you can't just move them. You can't move the canal. This isn't 1840. Or you can't just move the railway track either. You have to build over it or up. So that's why Old Trafford keeps having these sort of different ways of increasing the capacity of going up rather than out. Because we can't go out. Because we're sort of penned in. So for me, listen, I get the emotional attachment to Old Trafford. I have had genuinely some of the greatest moments in my life in that stadium. Like I'm not even exaggerating. I have, and I love can I, can I grab you on as that? much as anyone. But I think it rebuild. Sorry, go on. Let me grab you on that because you just give me the perfect kind of segue there. I was going to ask, you know, if they do whatever it is they do with it, if you knock it down, they turn it into something else or whatever, and they come to you and they say, Jay, we want you to write something in this book about your favourite memories. You know, what what makes you glow? What what is something that you, that you would put in there? It's a really good question. I think. There's, there's loads of little different ones for me, but the one that stands out, and there's, there's two that stand out, sorry, and I'll, I'll mention both of them. One is the 1990 Rumbelow's Cup quarterfinal, I think it was. Rumbelow's Cup? Out of Trafford. Rumbelow's Cup. What the fuck is a Rumbelow's Cup? Is that the Good League question. Cup? Is that the League Cup? That, yeah, got it in right. one. That was the League Cup. Cup. Now, Jesus. right now, the League Cup is looked at as almost irrelevant, especially when Manchester yeah. United win it because everyone saw it suddenly decided <laughs> it's a to tin pot cut, yeah. the it's, Cup. It's a tin pot it trophy. Yeah. But if Liverpool win it, it's the greatest achievement in the history of association football. Yeah. Um, but that back then, you played your strongest team in the League Cup. You tried to win it. You, you didn't mess about with it. It wasn't, oh, I'll just play the resis. And Liverpool, I think, were the league champions at the time. United, obviously, we were there. I think... I think this might have been just after we'd won the FA Cup, but Liverpool was still the, the the sort of the best team in the land and I'd gone through this period of dominance. And it was my first clear memory, not my first trip to Old Trafford, it's my first clear memory of a game at Old Trafford. I was 10 years old, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, I have never heard an atmosphere like it, genuinely. United versus Liverpool in 1990, there's nothing like it, bro. Trust me, right? Do you remember where you were sat? It was unreal. I just remember, I think, I would have been in what is now, I think it's the Bobby Charlton stand. Okay. Mm. What's the side? What's the stand? What's the side where um, the dugout is on now? What the what fuck? The... Okay, the effects are coming on your It screen. started raining on you then. Oh, <laughs> oh, always what was going on there? In, in yeah. Salford. Um, the... Go on. Is it? I always get confused. 
That is that the Fergie stand or the Bobby Charlton stand? The Bobby sure Charlton stand's the nearest, isn't it? And the Fergie stand's the one at the back bit. Obviously, you've got right. East, you've got the back, and then you've got Stretford, and you've got um, Bobby Charlton's the nearest, isn't it? Yeah, so it would have been that stand. And the atmosphere is ridiculous. I remember my dad jumping up and down the back of his seat. I remember Mark Hughes going absolute world there. It was just a phenomenal, phenomenal night. And it, it, I've never heard noise like it. It was like you just put a set of headphones on and it was non-stop screaming. And it was back in the day when I was, you used to get this, where you'd have loads of people who'd be at the front, not paid by the club or anything, just did it. And they'd turn and they'd get you all going, come on. Rah. Yeah. And because of the hatred was visceral between United and Liverpool. Now, there's a hatred, I get it. It ain't like it was in 1990, trust me. Mm -hmm. In 1990, people were, you know, literally knocking lumps out of each other in those types of games. It was ridiculous. And that atmosphere just stays with me. It stayed with me for the last 34 years. And then the second one, if I'm allowed, another one, is um, the Sheffield Wednesday game where Steve Bruce got his two headers. Because oh. I didn't have a ticket for that. And I only got in for the last 10 minutes, me and my mates. When the gates, Time. you just open the gates and you just walk in. So we walked in and then witnessed both those goals. Um, and obviously everyone knew that was the title. It wasn't mathematically the title, but that was it. So to, to go that will go behind, think that it's over. I think this is going to be another year where we don't win the title after the season we just had where Leeds pips us and then realised actually we're going to win it. And that was the, the, the sort of the birth of Fergie time as well. It was just phenomenal. So those have been my two moments, if I'm allowed to. Need to get them in writing, bang them in the book, and send it when they uh, eventually build the new Wembley, the North, or whatever they're going to call it. Well, there might be... You've got to look, look at it as well. The, there's, there's talk of this there's this task force. There's muster involved. There's one or two others. But Sir Jim Ratcliffe's always said he's going to speak to the fans about it. So you've just got to make sure as well, if you ever get the opportunity to make your voice heard, whether it's a survey, whether it's an interview, whether it's whatever... You take the opportunity because I don't know, and I've never met Sir Jim Ratcliffe. I don't know if he's going to be good to his word, but if he is willing to listen to fans and you've got a strong opinion on it and you're given the opportunity to speak up on it and do that, because the last thing you want to do is turn around in 10 years saying, Oh, I have the opportunity to talk up about it, but I didn't, and now I'm starting a stadium, I can't stand. So I just think, like, if, and I know it's a big if, but if he's true to his word, then any fan who's got that opportunity or can take part in anything in terms of surveys, in terms of being asked, in terms of whatever, even if it's just a vote, then do it, man. Let, let them know what you think about it, whether you're, and that's not me trying to push an agenda, that's whether you're for a revamp, for a rebuild, whatever. Just make sure your voice gets heard. Open invites to Jim. Yeah, if you want to come on the channel, feel free. <laughs> if you're watching. Yeah. You never know. You never yeah. know, man. He was at the cash machine at Eccles, wasn't he? He was getting his that. dog out, so <laughs> he's got an affiliation with us lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh so. god. Yeah. Uh, let's. I want to talk about managers. Um, we did a show yesterday. Basically, went through all the rumored managers and like how we felt about him, pros, cons, whether we pick him. And we basically came to the conclusion: nobody jumped out where we like get him. That's the guy. That's the one we want. Nobody really jumped out, and we had like rumored Amaron on there from Sporting Lisbon, Chavi, Tuchel, Nagelsmann, whoever you want. We had every single one of them. Are you starting to look past Ten Hag? Are you still like in the camp of no? We need to keep this guy, and we need to like build on what he's 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 sort of already established so far. Like, where are you at with the sort of manager situation? For me, I stick with him. I think that whilst this season has been borderline disastrous, yeah. if you look at the performances, some of the results um, that we've had. The fact we went out of the Champions League with one win in the group is a disgrace. The fact that we're so far behind Manchester City and Liverpool and Arsenal in the title is is a joke. And losing at home to Fulham, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Brighton, Newcastle, Galatasaray is unacceptable. However, there is a caveat to all of this. Well, there's two caveats I'd make. One, in fact, there's about three, sorry. One, he had a good first season. Very good first season. Top three in a trophy. Pep didn't do that in his first season. Klopp didn't do that in his first season. Arteta didn't do that in his first season. None of those got Champions League football and a trophy in their first season. So, got to give him some credit there. We have been ravaged with injuries. More injuries than anyone else. I think we're top of the injury table if that's a thing. Also, the nature of those injuries. Martinez is vital. He's been out for almost the entire season. Mason Mount was your marquee signing. He barely kicked the ball for Manchester United. 
Rasmus Hoyland had just got going and then he's missing vital games. We have missed key players at key times, man. And that has hurt us. And it's hurt us badly. Cobby Mayhew, everyone assumed when he got injured against Real Madrid in Houston. Oh, I don't matter. He's only a you know, reserve player or a squad. No, he was a star. And I think the manager knew that. He thought this is a absolute talent. I want him in my team. And he was missing for the first 15 games. So that hurts you. Then also you've got the fact that we haven't really gone for it in January. We haven't done anything in January. We needed reinforcements. We needed a signing. We needed a striker. We needed a left back. We needed a midfielder. We needed a centre back. And we didn't get any of those things. That hurts us. That's not the manager's fault. And people go, oh, you shouldn't have spent so much money. Somewhere. You're telling me that the manager knows what injuries he's going to have by January. Of course he doesn't. And he goes to the board in January, he goes, I've got no left backs left. I've got two strikers and they're both injured. And I've got a 35 year old we brought in for a couple of friendlies who's starting every game for me because my centre backs are all out. And the board go, tough, deal with it. Mm. That's hard. That's difficult for him to deal with. So when I look at those factors, I just feel that as well as the facts he's only ever and so recently works under the Glazer regime, he deserves his chance under the new ownership, the new ownership model. We're going to get Dan Ash within, we've got Omar Barada in. Let's give Eric Ten Hag the opportunity to work under these people for one season. Steve Alston, I keep mentioning him because I've done a podcast with him today, and he made a good point. He said, Eric Ten Hag's got another 12 months on his contract, and then there's an option, I think, to extend it. Give him those 12 months. Yeah. Let him have him. Mm -hmm. So you've got your 12 months. And also, if it doesn't work out, it's not on Ineos. It's not Ineos appointed Deserby, and Deserby flops, and then they sacked him. It's Ineos saying, we, we inherited this manager. We gave him a chance at the end of his contract. And then at the end of his contract, we didn't even sack him, we just didn't renew it. That makes sense to me. I think Eric Ten Hag, just about, by the way, has done enough for me to deserve another season. So, and as well, Sam, the point you made is valid. There's no outstanding candidates. In 2022, the outstanding candidate was Eric Ten Hag. He just won three titles on, a, on the spin at Ajax. The only reason he didn't win four was because of COVID and he was still top of the league when COVID happened. He'd had that run to the semi-finals in the Champions League where they battered the likes of Real Madrid. He'd won various other trophies as well, the Cups and what have you in, in Holland. He'd been on these mad runs in Holland where they'd won like every, well, like, you know, 95% of the games, even by Dutch standards, it was silly. It made sense. He's the guy. He's the obvious candidate. There isn't one of them now. Everyone you've mentioned, Nagelsmann, won a, a title with Bayern Munich. What did he do? Everyone does. I'm not saying that makes him a bad manager, but it doesn't make him a great one. Thomas Tuchel, absolute bin fire at Bayern Munich under him at the minute. Yes, they've got through in the Champions League. They're what, 10 points behind by Leverkusen? Yep. Really? Not winning the title in, in Germany if you're Bayern Munich manager is disgraceful. Criminal. And that's looking, that's look, looks like that's what's going to happen to him. I know he won the Champions League in, in uh, for Chelsea and I know he got to the final with Paris Saint-Germain and deserves credit for that but both at Chelsea and at Bayern Munich things have gone wrong for him and I don't know whether he's a, a guy you can bring in and pretend he's anything other than a short term answer uh, the kid at Sporting whose name I always get wrong Ruben Amarin he's won one out of three titles not disgraceful not amazing Portugal for me is a great unknown I have not got a jar of glue whether that makes him a great manager or not I don't know not the yeah. only one mate yeah, Benfica, Sporting or Porto are the teams that do well there. Yeah, yeah. He's done well with one of them. Does that mean he's bad? No. Does it mean he's the next Jose Mourinho? Probably not. I don't really know. Nothing there that says get him in. Roberto De Zerbe, finished eighth. I think it was his seventh or eighth. Forgive me, last season. I think they're about ninth this season. Very well done. Well on a shoestring. What's his CV saying to you? He's been at Shakhtar. He's been at Sassuolo. To clubs like that. He's never been anywhere near a club the size of Manchester United. And also, he's going to come into that dressing room and he's going to be telling these players to listen to him. And when they're looking at his CV, they're going, what have you won? He's going to say, well, I haven't won out, but I took Brian to seventh. So trust me, I know what I'm on about. Yeah, How exactly. are they going to respond to that? I'm Same thing sure. with Potter, though, Jay. Like, Potter walks in the door. Agreed. I won one league title with Sweden. And they go, all right, mate. What's your fucking point? You know what I mean? Like, Oli got away he... with it because he was Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Ollie went there and he went, it wasn't about I'd won two league titles with Malden. No one gave a toss about that, let's be honest. The reason Ollie got Gunnar Solskjaer got the permanent job is because he smashed it as a caretaker. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't win those 10 out of 14 games, he don't get the job, but he did, so he, he did get the job. That yeah. was his CV. 
Not what he'd done in Mulder or Cardiff. No one cared about that. It was the fact he'd smashed at his caretaker and he was a club legend. So the yeah. fans were behind him. You the players got with him. You understood he the understood. culture. Yeah. And the players got on board because of what he'd done in that caretaker period. Mm. So that was different. So people go, well, what's, you know, what did I... And also, let's not forget, Ollie's lack of a CV ended up hurting him in the end. Yeah. Because when it was all going wrong, people went, well, look at his CV, it's not very good. That's why he's not won a trophy at United. So, of all the names you've mentioned there, none of them particularly stand out for me. And that's another reason why I think Eric Tanag might deserve another season. Well, there's there's pressure on you every single game, isn't there? It's just it, no matter what it is, if it's fucking Fulham at home or Liverpool as we've got next um, in the FA Cup, there's going to be huge eyeballs on that, and it's people reactionary. It's more and more becoming a reactionary culture in it. People like after a game, it's almost like you don't even know what's authentic or not anymore. Do you know what I mean? So, obviously, with that big game coming up, Jay, um, I wanted to do, and I, I don't. This is going to pain both of you. So it's going to pain all of us. But I'm going to ask you to. Um, specifically to do an all time Liverpool and United combined 11 an all time Liverpool and United combined yeah. 11 that's yeah. easy go it's not, no Liverpool right. players getting in it so we're, we're good there Obviously, right. Like... I, right try and put your bias as a little bit do you know what I mean <laughs> like put it aside a little bit if you can okay right in goal Edwin van der Sar <laughs> right okay <laughs> He's better than Alison Becker, and Alison Becker's the goal, best goalkeeper they've ever had. Right, I'm sorry, what are we talking about? Are we going back to bloody Bruce Grobble? Ah, come on, let's let's be honest there. Let's be real. Yeah, left back Danny Sir is uh... the best left back of the, the Premier League's ever seen, the best left back English football's ever seen. Yeah, yeah. we all on we all on board yeah, yeah. so far. Yeah, right. I didn't watch Danny Sirwin enough, so I can't really comment on that. But I would agree okay. from from what I've seen. Right back. Even though Wes Brown had the best season at right back in 2008, Gary Neville for me, you don't win 10 or 11 Premier League titles unless you're the best right back. I'm sorry. And who else are we going to have? Trent Alexander Arnold, a, a right back who can't defend. Let's not be silly here. Do you know what I mean? Anyone who thinks Trent Alexander Arnold should be in an all time United Liverpool 11 wants to watch Real Madrid versus Liverpool, where Trent Alexander Arnold is the only one in Paris who doesn't know where Vinicius Jr. is. And he's the one who's meant to be marking him. So. It's Gary Neville at uh, right back for me. Do you, do you agree with that, Sam? Just sorry to. Yeah, no, know. like if, sorry, whatever, I'm... whatever United player Jay puts in, I'm all right with. Like, there's no Liverpool players getting in this team, so. I, I'm all about this. I love, I love your attitude. It's honesty. Yeah. Um, we'll also say right. Let's um, what else are we talking about here? Right, where are we at? So centre backs. Yap Stam's the best um centre back I've ever seen. Yeah, Vidic. he is. Do we put Vidic with him? I, I would Rio. pull. Are you put Rio personally? I'd put Rio in there. I'd put Rio over um, Vidic. Vidic. But I'll, I'm, I'm not... I'll let you... Sam, I don't want to choose it all. Go on, bro. If you want to choose... No, Vidic, no. I think Yapstam, Rio is a good combo because I think you put yeah, Vidic yeah. and Yapstam, that's prison FC that there's a red card happening. Yeah, strange ways at the back line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. You need someone who's not going to get sent off. Yeah. Um, are we going... What what formation are we going so, to Because you use a more kind of 80s, 90s kids, go for the old school yeah. kind of 4 4 2 Going 4 4 right. Okay. Central midfield, this is where we might differ. Okay. I would have Keane and Robson. Now, people will say, where's the creativity? People underestimate how good at passing, how good at controlling the game Roy Keane could be. Mm -hmm. People yep. underestimate Brian Robson's attacking prowess as well. The guy yep. could bang in goals from 30 yards on his weaker foot. So I think that midfield combo works. Also, no one's fucking with you. No. Like... You've won the game before the kickoff. You look at that midfield, you've got him up against Brian Robson and Roy Keane. Now nah, I'm phoning in sick. You're done for. Genuinely. It's yeah. an injury on the side. Sub me off. I'm, 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 yeah. I need to come up. 100%. Sam? Uh, I, I, we... I'd put Keane in skulls, personally, just because that was the era I grew up okay. in. And it I was one of the can, greatest midfield combinations I've ever yeah. seen in my life. Like, watching Paul I'm... Scholes play is like... It feels dirty, almost, because it's how good it is. It just feels yeah. like it's wrong to Explicit watch. Explicit content. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it just get an 18 rating on the trailer. Like, it's yeah. proper filth. But yeah, that's mine. Mm. Um, I think right winger, we're just having... I'm going to minute. We're going 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah. yeah. Right winger, I would probably say David Beckham, to be honest. Ronaldo. Especially in a 4-4-2. Four, four, oh, you're putting him out on the wing. Cristiano. 
Yeah. So that's why he did his best for United, didn't he? He did his best thing. Ballon d'Or winning season is the best thing I've ever seen. If you are put, I mean, he won the Ballon d'Or. No, he scored 42 goals in a season. If you are sticky Martin around, we ain't got an issue with that. That's fine. You know, he's probably, he's, let's have it right. He's the only player in Premier League history who's in the conversation for being the greatest player of all time. Yeah. The, like, lots of people say, well, Messi's better than Ronaldo, but Ronaldo's in that conversation. No one else is. No one's. Uh, no one else is in the conversation for the greatest player of all time. Exactly. Other than Ronaldo, Messi and Maradona. So, you can't... Oh, Pele, sorry. So, there, those four, and of those four, <laughs> only one last time I checked, only one player in the Premier League is Ronaldo. So, I'll, I'm, yeah... 100%. Um, left wing, the guys won 13 Premier League Gigs. titles. It's not a conversation. Yeah. Like People act like he won them titles by luck or by, because Fergie just liked him as, as a mascot. He won him because he played his part in winning him. No one else comes close to him out of trophies he's won for a reason. He was mint. So left wing, it's got to be Ryan Giggs. My not favorite. Harry Cool. <laughs> Harry Cool. Harry Cool. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Stuart One of my favorites. <laughs> One of my favourite players of all time, Ryan Giggs. Like, he's right, the reason. So? I played on the wing because I wanted to be Ryan Giggs when I was a kid. That's yeah. the reason I played on the wing because I loved, I loved are watching you, him. He's not going to throw Gerard in there. I'm just like no. the elephant in the room. Absolutely. Not, not. going to throw Gerard in there. Hang on a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, said, I think I said earlier that was the most ridiculous question you ever asked me when you asked me whether it was Eccles or Sale. Yeah. That's the worst that question that you've ever it. asked me. Someone, right? Who literally never won a league title. And not only did he G. never win a league title, he cost his team a league title because his ego was so big, he thought he was better than he was. Is he going to get into a team over the likes of Paul Scholes, Brian Robertson, Bobby Charlton, Roy Keane, Nicky Butt, Michael Carrick? No. Do you remember you said to me before you couldn't go on the overlap because you have a tendency to this kind of like... This is why. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, but you know what, right, about Gerard, he's I genuinely think he's the most overrated player in the history of football, right? I'll tell you why. Because this guy, if you look at his moments, his greatest moments and what he achieved, yeah, now he's a good player, I'm not saying he wasn't. But if you look at when they won the Champions League, obviously, he played well in the final. Xabi Alonso was the reason they won that final. Even Didi Hamann was the reason they won that final. If you look at what he did in England shirt, nothing. Nothing. When he retired from England, he was naming his best games and one of them was against Luxembourg or Liechtenstein, one of the, the minnows, get a grip, seriously. In that game against Chelsea, right, the reason they lost it, not just because he fell over, or slipped over and gave the ball away to Denver Bar who scored the goal, that was in the first half. There was 60 minutes of football or whatever it was left in that game. The reason they didn't get that draw, they only needed a draw, don't forget, Liverpool in that game. The reason they didn't get a draw is because every time Steven Gerrard got the ball after that, he shot. He had something like 20 shots after that against Mark Schwarzer, who was the reserve keeper because Jose was playing his reserve team because they had the game against Atletico in the Champions League later on that, that week, or the next week, sorry. He made it all about him. I'm going to shoot, I'm going to get us back in this game. And he just kept giving the ball away because every time he shot, he didn't score, so he was giving it away. So I just feel that Steven Gerrard was a guy whose ego was far greater than his talents. He's got... His talents were very high, but his ego was even higher. He's got John Terry vibes, hasn't he? Like John Terry did 100%. that with Chelsea. Like he's got, he's like, oh no, I'm gonna make it about me, and then he fucks up and costs his team the entire thing. The guy who who wasn't playing on the final and then came on with his kit underneath his tracksuit and he didn't even play in the game. Yeah. He just like, come yeah. on, mate, like, give me a rest. That's it. I just feel that Steven Gerrard is a a very good player. He was. He's been elevated into this sort of iconic, greatest of all time status for t for two reasons. One, because the media loved him, and two because he played in a Liverpool team that far often was underperforming and he wasn't. He was performing well and the team around him often wasn't. And then the one season where he had a team around him that was good, he fluffed it. He fluffed it for him. So, not for me. Sorry, bro. Okay, let's do the last two strikers quick. What, what are we going Rooney. with? Throw me Rooney. to out there. Rooney goes in. No Great doubt. shout. Great shout. I don't understand why anyone wouldn't say uh, Wayne Rooney. Not only did he score loads of goals, 253 goals for Manchester United, more than any other striker, not only when he retired was he the England's greatest ever goal scorer, he was also, right, and this is so, so rare, he was the strike partner for three different Golden Boot winners. Yep. Robin Van Persie, Dimitar Berbatov and Cristiano Ronaldo all won the Golden Boot, playing alongside Wayne Rooney. Also yeah. played in the probably one of the greatest front lines ever in Carlos Tevez, Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo, like... You can't get much better. And was the reason why 
Cristiano flourished because he was the one putting in the fucking leg work. Yeah. And likewise with with a lot of the other strikers, like yeah, no, I don't. No one comes close to Rooney for me. That's not even like a question in, in that all yeah. time. Yeah, it's just a, um, it's just personal preference after that, isn't it? Like who you want. I, I, I'm sure Jade put Andy Cole in. You could put. I would. Uh, do you know what? I wouldn't. I, I no. wouldn't. I'm, I'm going to stick to players I've seen because we can all argue that you put Dennis Law in or you could put yeah. uh, Tommy Taylor or Dennis Violet from the numbers that you've seen from him. But let's be real, we've never watched them, so we've got to be honest. And for me. The, the one player I've ever seen play for Manchester United who has been more than a player, who has been a force of nature, is Eric Cantona. There you go. And he came in, and we haven't won a title for 25 years, and in every single season he played, bar in the season he was suspended, we won a title. That's not a coincidence. And also, by the way, he won a title two years earlier, once for Marseille and once for Leeds United. And last time I checked, Leeds United have only won one title in four years, and that was the season they had Eric Cantona. That's not a coincidence. Yeah. That's unreal. Do you know what I mean? That is a player who is just a phenomenon. And he came he come in, not only did he win the title, he won us two doubles. And he scored in both finals. The only reason we didn't win the Champions League when Eric Cantona was there, by the way, was because of the free foreigner rule, which was actually deemed illegal and racist. Mm. He was unreal. An aura about him. He controlled games, he took games by the scuff for net, he got your vital goals. He was just like no other player I've ever seen ever. And I, for, for me, I'd have to have him in the team. I'd have to. Uh, I won't. I won't argue it. I'm not. I'm not going to argue it at all. So. I just. I just feel that Eric Cantona. He kind of is right. Not by United fans, but by other fans and by the media, underrated a bit, because I think, because he's in that weird era in the Premier League, before the Premier League was quite the phenomenon it is now, where. The, the players from the early 90s don't get the props that the players from the noughties and the, the, the 2010s and the 2020s get because not every game was televised not every goal like not every not there wasn't that sort of the internet wasn't a thing so you don't have all these sort of big sort of social media almost campaigns backing players and singing about players and raving about players Eric Cantona falls into that sort of period where between 93 and 97 before he retired when he was winning all those titles for us where there isn't as much attention given to that period yeah, are those titles any less valid than the titles that City have won now, for example, no. or that United won later on with Van Persie and Rooney and, and Ronaldo? Of course not. And you look at Eric Cannon now, right? He gets suspended in 95. I think we're top of the league when he gets suspended. We, we, we don't win it in the end. Blackburn win it. He comes back in October the next season. I don't think we're top of the league when he comes back. By the time he finishes that season, we've won double. And he scored five winners in some consecutive games, including the FA Cup finals to win us the double. That's unbelievable. Man. And you know what the crazy thing is about Eric Cantona as well? Right? If, if I could go back in time as a United fan, I know full well Eric Cantona climbing into the into the stand and, you know, getting attacked viciously on his football boots by Matthew Simmons, the Crystal yeah. Palace fan. I know that cost us a title. It cost us the double because we in the FA Cup final we lost that as well. And I think if we go back in time, I wouldn't change that. I'd let I'm him do that. Of who he is. And it's, it's who he is. One of them. Yeah, and you know what? That. If you're going to start giving people xenophobic, racist abuse, and you think you can Fuck get it. away with it because he's a footballer, then I'm sorry, I've got no sympathy when you get your head kicked yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. So, Eric Cannonar was just different. You will never, ever, ever see a player like Eric Cannonar. Even now, right? I, I was flicking through Saturday Night Telly, and the geezers on Michael McIntyre singing songs. He doesn't give a shit. No. He does what he wants, and I love that about. He does him. weird films. He, do, he does poetry. Yeah. He's, he Interviews. Just does, pops yeah. up, like, man. He, he does. You know. He, he doesn't give a fucking. He never did. He's yeah. just amazing, and I'm so so grateful we got him. I am so grateful. Howard Wilkinson was off his head, <laughs> and sold him to us because that is one of the greatest moments in football. Eric Cantona signing for Manchester United. And I love the fact that Sir Jim Ratcliffe name checks. I was him. just going to say that. I was going to say because he's named his company Anti Trawlers after the, uh, yeah. the phrase that he, he, uh, Seagulls when he, the when he gave When he gave his media interviews the other day, he did a round of media interviews and he said to him, You know, you look at this club, it's about glamour, it's about being different and being a little bit special. And he said, like, I'm paraphrasing, he said, You know, we have players like George Best, like Eric Cantona, who have that glamour, who have that aura. It's right. Eric, when I think of one player that sort of sums up what United are about, I always think of someone like Eric Cantona. Yeah, Nick Moss. 
Just Enig yeah, enigma. Like, Perfect. Just, just absolutely amazing. And, and he, I don't he want wasn't to keep even name dropping, but I got to meet him once, and it was the greatest moment of my life. No he wasn't even here that long, was. was he? Like he wasn't here that long. He was long. here from '92, December '92 to May '97. Yeah. Mental, so like five if you think years. About it, like, five years. Like, you've got players like Marcus Rashford's been at United far longer. Martial's yeah, been here for nine years. Nine fucking years. Pretty much double the amount of time Eric Cantona has been. Here. That's mad. When you put it like that, that is fucking like, mad, isn't it? It is. Crazy. And I, the funny thing is, right? I honestly believe if you had a, a 25-year-old Eric Cantona at United in some of those seasons where we've been miles behind City, I think the conversation's different. He's that good. Mm. Honestly, he is like, and he doesn't just change your team in terms of getting your goals. He changes everything about it. The standards go up. The reason you've got a class of '92 isn't just because of Eric Harrison and Sir Alex Ferguson, although they're a big part of it. Eric Cantona has a big part of that. You know, if you read any of Fergie's books, he said after the training sessions, Eric Cantona used to ask for two youngsters to come with him, and he practiced for an extra hour on his headers or on his volleys, getting someone to ping it in against the goalkeeper, and he's having his shot or yeah. do one on ones. And youngsters watched that and they copied it. Yeah. That got into the, the, the dressing room. So all of a sudden you've got the likes of Beckham and Scholes and Butt and they're looking at Eric Cantona going, if that's what Eric Cantona's doing and he's the best player on this in this team and I want to get in his team, this is what I need to be doing. And that standard was sort of set for the next 20 years and that's all that of Eric, man. There's a reason we didn't win a title for 25 years before he arrived and then when he arrived we kept winning him. It's because of him. Well, as I figured, the uh, combined eleven had zero Liverpool players. I thought that's the on. question to see if any, any of them could sneak in there. So no. I thought I'd ask. Sam, I'll, you had one last question. Yeah, one last the... question. I'll read some comments out as well, just because people have been commenting with Jay's here. Uh, there's no Liverpool players that come close to any United's best players. That's Brian Casey. Uh, Jim Mack, Jay's got no room to f get fit Henderson in. No, don't think so. Uh, Dean Henderson, not a chance. Dean <laughs> Uh, Cantona, my all-time favourite player, Tim 99. Uh, Chris Pep saying Cantona. Brian Casey say Rooney and Rude. Good shout. Rude. I would have put Rude. Uh, class. Chris Rude's Pep. Uh, can't read that out. I'm not, sorry, Chris. I'm not, I can't read that one out. <laughs> it might be liable. I can't see these comments. No, no, just... but it might be a bit yeah. liable, so I'm just going to avoid it. Uh, Cantona was kicking yeah. out racism before it was cool. So there's Jim Mack there as well. Uh, Skulls versus Barca for me. Never heard it so loud. Uh, Brian Casey Good nearly shout. as great as the Milk Cup. Was the Milk Cup before the Rumblows, or was it after? I think, yeah, I think it was. It was Milk Rumblows. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Carlin. Worthington. The I, Worthington Cup. In Worthington. In fact, in fact, it might have been Coca Cola. Worthington. Carlin. Was it maybe then yeah. Carabao? It's I don't a great know. trivia question, isn't it? Save yeah. that for the pubs. Yeah. See, see yeah. can get it. I think it might have been Little Woods at one point as well. Maybe. But yeah, get your questions for Jay. We'll fire some quick fire for you as well. You one. know what, like, Steel, me and Steel are talking about this on a brute. You know what they used to do as well in the, the, the League Cup final when it was the, I think it was when it was the Rumble Rolls Cup. They used to have a race with the fastest players in the in the, the Division 1 as it was then on the pitch at half time at Wembley. Really? In the full I'd kit. like that though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'd actually like that. Like, Google it. It's not a joke. So, wow. they'd have a race. And at the end, like the winner would win like a fridge or something because it was sponsored <laughs> by it. Like honestly, it sounds <laughs> crazy. Like, it's it's going like, back. It, like it's okay, honestly yeah. insane. But like you would, you've had all these players like from different teams in their full kit, and then he'd race down the like the, the through the, down the Wembley pitch, hundred meter race, and then whoever won would like get. Ima I'm pretty sure it's a fridge. Imagine or it's crazy. Imagine one of them pulls up with a hamstring and he's injured for the second half because he's just fucking yeah. done. No, no, not the teams friend. that are playing. Not oh. the teams that are playing. All oh, right, okay. The, the players from different, like, so let's say it's United versus Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Let's say it happened now and you had, like, the United Newcastle final last season. Then you'd have, like, Mo Salah and, I don't know, and Mudrick and. Just random, I mean? like, random team. Man. Yeah, like, <laughs> line up so on the pitch at time. Yeah. All in the kit, like, the full kit, <laughs> racing each other. And that at the end mad. of it, like, the winner gets a fridge or some shit. Honestly, people think I'm like, Google it, put it on YouTube, you will find it. I was going to say, put that up on the fucking screen, because that would be a lot. I don't know. I've never heard of anything like that before. That's fucking let me so try weird. And, let, me, let me see if I can see, if I can find it now. I'll send you the link. Yeah, Because, like, yes. I know you're thinking, like, Jay's back on the snizzle or whatever. He's lying. <laughs> but it's, like, Rumble Loves Cup, right? I'm just going to put in it 
Um, Rumble's Cup Sprint Race. Cup Sprint, yeah. Right. Rumble Old Sprint Challenge, 1992. Right, I found yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to put yeah. it in our little group chat. Yeah. And um, if you can, if you can, like, have a look at this. Fuck right. you now. Just look at the it pictures is. from it there. Absolutely. <laughs> Off it said, right? Ridiculous. There's no, there's no, there's no way you can defend Sam. this. Oh yeah. Like, uh, oh that's that's ones. That's not even the right one. Sorry, I think that's a different one because that's another one, right? I need to find the the. Um, that's just the. That is a race, um, but there's one where they used to have it on the pitch at Wembley. So. Oh, they draw lines oh, on yeah. it and everything. Yeah, that is I mental. found the one. So this is the Rumble Lowe's Cup final um, sports challenge 100 metres final, right? I found this one. <laughs> so this is actually at the final, right? There we where go. you get Let's all these players. The right, you get all these players, yeah? So you can see, right, you've got you've got a player from Hull, you've got Knox County, you've got Reading, yeah. you've got Swansea, you've got Sheffield United, you've got QPR, you've got Effin Okoku for Bournemouth, if you remember him, uh, and Mansfield, Paul Fleming. And the, yeah... They this sprinted mad. It all in the kit on this pitch at Wembley. I'm pretty sure the winner got some bum like a fridge or something, you know. I'm, I'm sure it, well, it's surely is... if they're looking at like you know, they're weighing it up and they're going to the imagine ringing the manager up nowadays and going, Can we have Harry Maguire? We're doing a race for a fridge and it's an 100 meter sprint. They'd be like, What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> the actual thought of it is just fucking madness. That is Jesus utter Christ. madness. So, right, so I found it in a minute. I didn't get a fridge. I think that was another one. He got 10 grand. <laughs> Oh, well, slight difference. Slight difference. But, yeah, yeah. I'd be turning up. Fucking two, Ten right? Grand. Anfield or not. Ten grand, I'd be like, yeah. Put me Mate, in that fucking thing. It is crazy. <laughs> That's mental. Uh, that was a, I was on a pitch at Wembley. Imagine that nowadays. Like, people have been losing their minds. Like, I don't mind it. Do you remember that thing we said, Sam, about the fucking... Oh, yeah. My, uh, I had an idea of, like, create, what? like, a UFC-type situation, but with football mascots. So you could have, like, yeah. Gunnosaurus against Fred the Red. Like just half time, they just beat shit out of each other. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm, that. I'm down for that. And yeah. you see, like Ty, you see, like Ty from Arsenal fan TV going, <laughs> "Fred the Reds are good as you cheat." Do you know what? Right? It. <laughs> I remember when it kicked uh... off with Les Sealy, God rest him, the former United goalkeeper, and Fred the Red at the end of the season. What you had a fight with him? That he sort of squared up because oh. <laughs> at the end of the '94 season, right? I remember, right? I told this story, yeah. And people thought I was making it up. People thought I was crazy, right? I said something on Twitter or something, and I said, or I said something on like, on camera. And then someone found like a forum post where people were chatting about it, and people had said, "Did anyone see Les Sealy fighting with Fred the Red?" <laughs> at the end of ninety four, at the end of ninety four, right? United played Coventry the last game of the season at Old Trafford. The last bit of standing it was at the time, and then um, we won the we won the league, and then it was like Wembley the week later or whatever. And that's when we did double, but we won the league that day. And at the end of the game, all the players jumped Fred the Red. So they just piled on him. And then they ripped his like his hat off, his face, his like mask, whatever you call it. And um and he snapped. He snapped. It's <laughs> but still got half a fucking costume on, so, so he's, he's like got his costume on, but not his head. So he snapped. Oh. But this is like the end of, this is the end of the game when the parade and all like the the, the fan that people celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and he's he's like he's kicked off, he said something to Les Sealy, and Les Sealy, like God rest him. He had a reputation of being a, a bit of a nutter, like he didn't mess with Les like He was rowdy, yeah. like proper rowdy, old school type goalkeeper from the eighties, like hits and all that all over the gaff and would have it with anyone. Do you know what I mean? Would just took no prisoners. And um he's obviously not having any of it. So they like squared up to each other. And then like I think someone had to sort of drag Les Sealy away before he murdered him. But I remember <laughs> saying that and people were like, nah man, that never happened. And then someone found it because like it wasn't on the telly. I was there and I was watching it. And I, I, I remember it because I was watching it like, right, leave me mates. Like, can you see Fred the Red and Les Sealy like kicking off of each other? And someone found out, I'll try and dig it out, man. I just, I find if out anyone's got footage in the chat, send it real yeah. red. If you've got footage, right, I've, never, I've never, I've literally, right, I've never seen that footage uh, anywhere. Someone will have it. A, unless someone was camcording it. Yeah. Camcorders weren't really a common thing, but it didn't mm. exist. I doubt you'd be able to see it, but. It, it happened and I found like a forum post because I remember I think I might have tweeted something about it once and someone like was said to yeah. me, oh, you know, you're, you're chatting rubbish. And then someone else found like a forum post where someone had mentioned it. And I was like, that's what I was on about because it was nuts, man. That's it was like crazy. The, the early 90s was elite. 
Yeah. Oh, fucking sounds like it. You mentioned about four things there that are just like... Got, got players racing on <laughs> Wembley final. Yeah. Like, Sealy's kicking shit out of Fred of the Red. Like, Do you know what I mean? It's like, you just don't... They don't make it like that anymore. Do you know what I mean? They really don't. Uh, Sam, unless, unless you had anything there or any questions to think, I think that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. There was something about facing Liverpool on Sunday, but who gives a shit at this point? Like We've <laughs> talked about Fred the Red and... Like yeah. Sealy kicking off. These, we, mate, we just we the standard was there. We yeah. can't go drop it down to Liverpool. I can't. I can't ask like. a serious question about possibly losing to the Scousers. Like I can't do that. Yeah. Shit. Like, it's fucking... Nah. Um, that. Couple no, of no, quick. You know, we... go on. Quick go on. Yeah, in the chat. Going, you're all right. Uh, didn't mascots used to play a match too? Brian Casey saying. You remember that, Jay? Yeah, mascots? I think there was a mascots. There was a mascot. I mean, there's a mascot race, wasn't there? Yeah, that's that's not an old that old. I don't know if they played a match. I can't remember, bro. My memory yeah. is so bad. These sound not... like things Barcelona would come up with to generate revenue. You know all the shit yeah. they've been doing recently, but they're doing yeah. like birthday parties and that. Bro, this sounds like the sort of thing City do. Yeah, have you ever seen yeah. like City do like a proper fringe? Who is their mascot? It's that alien um... thing, get it? The fucking alien, the silver head and stuff. I can't, that's I how know you know, name. yeah, you're a shit club if no one knows your mascot, you remember... like the name of it or anything. Do you remember West no Brom? Sponsored by a boiler company, and they made yeah, their mascot a boiler. <laughs> yeah, he was his boiler. Are you like, what the fuck's going on here? Why is he? Why the is there a boiler? Like <laughs> why is there a boiler in a kit? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Wait, it, it's not in it. The whole mascot thing. But my kids, I took my kids in under twenty threes, and they got proper giddy for Fred the Red. Nice. Yeah. The like kids they do, were man. buzzing, yeah. like, yeah. like, because obviously it's under twenty three. It's yeah. just people, t- players they don't know. <coughs> um, and Fred the Red was there, and they were absolutely, um, absolutely buzzing. I've just seen a comment. I don't know if it's true. Say it, say it. Jim Mack said, "I once saw Barney the Dinosaur getting jumped in a pub in Leeds." <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I want sorry. Barney the dinosaur getting jumped in a pub in Leeds. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know why. That sounds like it could be true. It could be Do true. You know I mean? uh, last question, Brian Casey. Uh, Favourite cereal, Jay? And then we'll end it there. Um, right, I don't even know. What, what I'm going to be a strong like? critic on this as well because I like my cereal. I, I, so, I, you can't I'm be not... picking anything like shredded wheat or any of that nonsense. Oh, Do you know what? I don't, um, I don't really eat because I don't. I'm on a fasting thing. I don't really eat in the morning, so I rarely have ce- cereal. Um, what's the? I know this sounds proper dumb. What's the one that's um, not frosties like? Oh, like frosties. No, but the, like the golden one, like the um, crunchy golden, nut. Oh, crunchy nut cornflakes. Crunchy that, yeah, nut. Right. So yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I like right. crunchy nut cornflakes, but yeah. I rarely have cereal. But I eat crunchy. I could eat a bowl of crunchy nut cornflakes almost any yeah. any time that it was on offer. Yeah. But yeah. I don't, weirdly, I never really get. Because I don't eat, I get sale for the kids, but I don't really buy crunchy nut cornflakes myself. Well, there you have it. We managed to cover <laughs> crunchy nut cornflakes, can't and a kick in a fan, Wembley races, fucking boilers, all that kind of jazz. That's why I love doing these shows. And I don't think, I think you're too kind of, not too nice, Jay, but too humble to admit it. Like, absolute legend for, for coming on as many times as you do no, and no, just no. being, you know, helping us out and stuff like that. So, no, man. Appreciate, appreciate what you guys do. And you guys would send a favor. You come on, Paddock, and listen. Yes, sir. I like what you guys are doing, and I think I'm not going to fire shots at anyone here. That's not what I'm about. But I think sometimes fan channels get a bad reputation. Yeah. You get people that want to slag off what fan channels are about and the authenticity of fan channels and why fan channels do what we do. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys are a shining example to everyone what a fan channel should be like. I mean Pure. Pure. Yeah, absolutely. Sam, anything else? we had well, off. uh check us out tomorrow liverpool preview uh yeah not looking forward to it but it's what it is we i am to gonna it. beat him i've got a feeling we're gonna beat him uh, sunday we'll be scary. live pre-match um, post-match and then we've yeah. got alice talks 40 as well on tuesday yeah. don't forget so um but yeah check out if you don't I, i'm sure everybody follows strep for panic anyway yeah but if you don't go check jay out strep for panic check out scotty and marty all that stuff like he's on yeah. so go check that stuff out if you don't follow it already but yeah appreciate you coming on as well jay it's always a always a fun time yeah, it is, man. Time flies. Good chatting to you, lads, and I'll speak to you next week. Yeah. The Godfather of Eccles, everyone. Take peace. Peace. You're on mute, you. We won't play South, and we won't play South. We won't play South, and we won't play South. We won't play